Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Busternet. You're here with me. This is a new show. It's called the FM Community Challenge. It's really brought to you by Jambo. He started the thread. I'm just doing a show out of it because I wanted to do a video update and this makes it a lot easier for me to do it. What is the FM Community Challenge? Well, you're given one default formation. With that default formation, you choose your club. And you are a manager with international experience limited to two transfers and you can choose from a club from italy spain germany france or holland but the club cannot be a champions league side it can be a top five six four as long as you don't play in the champions league and you are not allowed to change that default formation you can keep it you can use it you can make tweaks to it you can mess with the roles you can mess with the shouts whatever but you are not allowed to move the the players from one spot to the other and turn it into something else. The whole idea is to take a default formation with the features that a tactical creator has and you are supposed to use it and make a tactic out of it. On today's show, we've got two tactics, the 3 4 2, one that I'm doing and Barsight's 4 2, 2, 2 dm wide box. So it's still early days for us. I'm still getting to grips with this 3 4 2, one system that I have. And I'm using a stopper-stopper cover um, backline and um, I'm still not entirely sure how my backline is going to be set up so i'm still like finding my way around and um a couple of games will tell me whether or not i'm doing the right thing or <laughs> i'm definitely getting things wrong uh, things i look for is um whether or not my three backs are doing a good job defending whether they're coming up whether my screen is working whether my two dms are doing a good job and whether my mcs are supporting the attack uh, in this match against tulu i wasn't really very happy with the way we defended um, it was really a messy goal and uh, it, we should have conceded the goal, the screen should have been better. So um, still messing with the system at the point, at this point in time. And uh, one of the things that's already, already I'm beginning to think of is if I want to uh, get my screen to work more effectively, I need to push my defensive line up. This is um, something that I'm in this match, it just started to come to grips with, okay, maybe with so many players in your own half, you want to get goals. And I'm beginning to get a lot of these goals happening when I start pushing up. And uh, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be probably the way I will end up playing the system in the long run. The final score of this match was 1-1. One, one, uh, to Lou, 1, Saint Etienne, 1. It wasn't exactly something I was like, ah, yeah, great. But we learned a lot of things from this match. In terms of our shots and our possession, we may have had less possession, we had more shots. Um, certain tweaks are still needed to the system. Uh, yeah, okay, so we we actually fought really hard to get back into the game and that I should be happy about. In another game against Thun for the Europa Cup, I created shots for an attacking system, but little did I expect a goal that would start from a throw-in in my own half. The number of passes that started from Esu Koto's throw-in would lead to him pulling off a cross from the flank that was cleared only partially to Clement. Clerk then makes sure that the ball gets into the right spot in the box for them to score what would be a very vital goal. I was, I mean, so far I've been messing about with things. The whole goal is to get my MCs forward. I think that at this point, I was still like messing about with, I wasn't sure whether the mentality was doing the trick or defensive line was doing the trick. But one of these is going to be critical to getting this system to work. And I believe thoroughly that the key towards making a solid system is to make sure that you get the right kind of support in attack. Well, this show is not all about the 3 4 2 one. It's about all the other tactics. Everybody else has been sending them to me and I'm really thrilled and thankful that all of you have done it. And today's, uh, we're going to feature Barside's 4 2 2, two box system. Barside is a very interesting system. I like the 4 2 2, two system. It's one of those... Um, one of those systems that has got so many guys backing the defense and he's created several variations of the tactic. He's using two complete wing backs and he's gone for the favorites. Uh, same players I would have chosen, Asue Koto and Malkut. And his backline, he's 
looks like he's uh, brought in Hilton from he, Hilton's definitely not from St. Etienne anyway. he's got Kohade Selnes Cognet and Martin up front he's gone with uh, the reserve player Tanan as well as Sodalan uh, interesting choices um, it's a tactic that he is using shorter passing play out of defense much deeper defensive line lower tempo prevent short goalkeeper distribution and play much wider my only concern here is the much deeper defensive line I think that uh, a higher defensive line is needed because then you'll be pushing the DMs a bit higher and you'll be getting the MCs more involved with the build up play in the final third mm. Probably he's doing this because he's worried about the security in the back line. That could be it. But you never know as an outsider looking in. You'd have to be playing the game yourself so that you can understand what's going on. The only things I, I'm a bit trying to come to terms with is play much wider and shorter passing. These two shouts, they seem a bit at odds with each other. Basai is a moderator on the forums and he's going with a 4 system. And he's had some decent results towards the end uh, he had a pretty rocky start at the beginning and you can read all about it on the SI forums I like the 4-2-2-2 system um, he selected to use two ball winning midfielders the challenge with the 4-2-2 is we need to see how he does with those uh, two ball winning midfielders and how they come up to support the rest of the play the 4 2 2 2, -2 system is actually quite an old system. Um, it was used by Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it was a pretty successful system way back in the day. Uh, here we see how he's managed to control his uh, corner kick routines. And um, Brisson is quite a favorite with quite a few of the PKMs I've seen. He plays quite well in my system as well. I like to see tactics in 2D because it gives me a better shape, idea of the shape of a tactic. Um, here you can see the gaps in the side, uh, the flank especially. Uh, it's the one area of the 422 that's uh, vulnerable and um, it, quite a few. I've seen a few of his goals, they, get con they concede it from attacks down the flanks. One thing I noticed was how well they defend from throw-ins on the sides. At this point, I think he was still trying to come to terms with the 4 2 system that he was using. Okay, from this drawing, just look at how his uh, system lines up. You got this perfect two lines and through the middle, and you've got players on the flanks. And then once they start going into attack, when Rufia has the ball, he just passes it to the fullback, and then look at the perfect line in the middle. And uh, as they go past, uh, it's a question of how well they can move off the ball. And here Brisson guts in. Um, they're lucky. Soderlund is lucky to pick it up and score the goal because the goalkeeper couldn't handle the cross. Uh, well, the stats of the final match don't, sh don't say very much except for the fact that it was a pretty even match. I reckon that Barca, it's still, it was figuring out the system at this point in time. As time goes on and the tactic gets better, I think the average ratings of this team is going to increase, especially for Oli Christian Sons, the playmaker. Oh, a lot of people have chosen him as the playmaker, including me. Well, the next match they had was pretty interesting. A 3-2 defeat, which actually shows quite a lot. Well, like many of us, their next match was against Toulouse, away. And it's interesting because uh, they lost this match. Losses actually tell you a heck of a lot more. And they played against a narrow diamond uh, with their 4 2 2 2 DM narrow system. Well, they, they, scored their, they scored their first goal off a throw in, and it was a well worked throw in. I think a lot of goals in FM 16 are going to come from throw in set pieces. And uh, Bajo, <laughs> he does the same thing with me. He comes into the box and he scores like goals for us as well. The weakness of the box. 4 2, two, two is obviously the flanks and it's something that is going to be a concern to anybody who wants to play any kind of a system where you don't have side midfielders. Uh, Tulu managed to equalize off best chick in the 45th minute by exploiting the left flank and then having somebody come in and come in and score on from the right. Here when they actually start a attack they break down the attack and immediately you can see again that the flanks become an issue when mouse cute 
goes charging up, Braithwaite is the one scoring on the other end when the attack down the right flank fails. It's The 4 2 2 box is actually a nice system, I like it, but the biggest challenge is going to be those flanks. So if you're facing the 4 2 2 uh, against an AI, which can happen, then I would recommend seriously, you know, you, you go in with a flank heavy kind of attack, and chances are you are going to take advantage of it, provided uh, the AI doesn't use a different combination in the DM slots. Here, Brisson is on the left flank looking. I actually like the movement this time around. And uh, Brisson is off to the flanks. And then you see one of the central midfielders already going to the box. Bajo is going up to support the fullback. And you've got Selnes in a very dangerous position. At this point in time, I'm going, wow, I like this. This is so cool. This is like, you know, how I would want my 4 2 2 2 2 to work. You got a feel for Barca. You know, it's 2 all. You know that the, the match is yours to win. He's in a beautiful position to get another goal from this throw-in. And the way the opposition is lined up, it's like set up for the perfect counter. And it's like in the 92nd minute, they break past the flanks and they score the winner. At this point, you know, it's really like mm, I felt for him. What I what I like to do whenever I lose a game, and I don't suggest everybody does this, but I like to break down my width ball into quarters in a whole game. So I break it down like every 15 minutes and I see how my average positions look like. This is what they look like in the first 15 minutes of the game. And then around the 19th minute where they scored their first goal. And then um, after that, you see the positions of the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. And I break it down right through the whole match. But what's interesting to see is going to be how the opposition exploit the gaps that are apparent on the heat maps. You know which areas the pitch are not being covered by the players. And um, it explains a bit to me at least uh, on the weaknesses of the system. And if I were to face a 4 2 2 to being used by the AI and I'll just have to look at the roles and the duties that the, they have elected to use and then I'll just adapt. And following that uh, defeat to Tulu, uh, they had another match after that. They had this 1-0 um, win over Bordeaux. What's very interesting is the differences in the two matches. In this match, they played a lot better. They had even possession, even though they only had two shots on target. What I was more keen to see was how the team's shape looked like because this again is a narrow diamond that they're facing and look at the difference in the system right now. In a way, you still have some like you still have uh, zones that can be exploited, but somehow or another the tactic looks a lot balanced when they did actually score that goal. I'm illustrating the use of heat maps for a reason because a, it helps me as well a lot in my, how I set up my tactics. When I want to look for areas of the zone that I need to cover, what am I doing wrong, what am I doing right, how can I improve my tactic. I use this quite a fair bit in my systems and you can see how, how well they crafted the goal against Bordeaux. Their next match, a 3-0 win against Bastia, but just check this out, 34% possession. But look at the shots on target, man. He's definitely done something right now. I mean, you know, I, I feel excited just looking at the stats. It's five out of six shots on target. Look at the opposition. One on target. One out of 21. One. I can't believe it. We all know throw-ins are kind of good at the moment if you got them set up, you know. You don't really need a lot of setup. My default, my throw-ins are all default. I haven't done anything new, different with my throw-ins. It just, yeah, I just take it the way it is. It gives me goals. They, they did okay. I mean, they created a, quite a fair bit of havoc in the opponent's half. Getting a penalty, Martin with two goals in this match, I think. And then the third goal is even sweeter. And the thing about here is this, you know, you got the opposition attacking you down the flanks, but this time, uh, certain things I noticed a bit more differently. It's not as easy as it was previously to penetrate them. If they have an opposition that wants to build an attack, uh, okay, if the opposition gives them time to settle in and defend, definitely um, the 4 2 2 is going to be a very hard system to break down. Uh, on the counter, yes, I would think that the 4 2 2 suffers uh, chronic uh, weakness, which is the flanks. But here you can see with the amount of support that's coming in, it stops looking like a 4 2 2. Look at the number of people heading into the box. This is like B line. Let's make a date party in the box and look at it. It's so beautiful to watch. 
at this point in time, with Nolan Roos scoring the goal, I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's probably got his, um, you know, he's probably got the whole thing sorted. And then when I look at his um, match ratings at the end of the game, the first thing I notice, okay, good. You know, a lot more people are getting higher ratings. You've got like Soderlin, but Soderlin gets really, really low ratings in my games as well. I don't even bother using him anymore. It just sucks. And uh, looking at tackles, look at the number of tackles uh, a Kotu is pulling off. He does the same in my games. Uh, he's a mainstay in my games. And the way they have lined up, the interceptions that are happening across the pitch, it looks really solid at this point in time. For all of us, the real test is going to come against sites like PSG, Monaco. These are the you know prima donna sites. These are the ones that are really good. And as you know, the further we get into the Europa Cup, it's going to get a lot, a lot harder. I like watching how other people create systems from the default tactics. And Barca's system looks very interesting. I would like to take this time to thank everybody for sending in those PKMs. Um, if they didn't make it in today's show, they'll definitely be in future shows. And once again, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at BusterNet or you can drop me a note at addictedtofm.com. I thoroughly enjoyed making this show and I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, please sound me out. And until we catch up again, you guys take care. Bye-bye.